a major meteor shower peaks as we track more comets moving through our solar system. Let's take a look at what you can go out to see in the night sky for December of 2025. I'm Michael Martin, and this is Late Night Astronomy. Happy holidays and welcome to the night sky. Let's begin our journey into space with a major meteor shower. The Geminids peak around this time every year as the remnants of an asteroid interact with our upper atmosphere. To see the Geminids, go outside on the night of December 13th into the early morning of December 14th and face towards the east. In this part of the sky, you'll find the constellation Gemini and the planet Jupiter. As the night of the 13th turns into the early morning of the 14th, the Geminids will continue to rise higher and higher into the sky, with the moon being completely out of the way for just about the entire show. Under perfect conditions in the northern hemisphere, you might be able to see just over 100 meteors per hour, with lesser rates under light-polluted skies and far fewer rates from the southern hemisphere. While the Geminids get all of the attention in December, the Ursid meteor shower also peaks this month. Look towards Ursa Minor, the Little Dipper, on the night of December 21st into the morning of the 22nd for these meteors to peak at a rate of 5 to 10 per hour. Our journey into space continues with our closest neighbor, the Moon. Let's begin with its phases, beginning with a full moon on December 4th, last quarter moon on the 11th, new moon on the 19th, and a first quarter moon on December 27th. The moon makes several close passes to objects in the night sky this month, beginning with M45 on December 3rd, Jupiter on the 7th, Mercury on the 18th, Saturn on the 26th, and the Pleiades again on December 31st. There are some great opportunities to see the planets of our solar system this month, and let's begin by going outside about an hour and a half after sunset and facing towards the southwest. As you look up, you'll come across the incredibly beautiful planet Saturn. Views of Saturn will start to show off its rings around 40 to 50 times magnification. We've just experienced a ring plane crossing with Saturn, so for the next several months, the rings will look like a bright straight line going around the planet. Just up from Saturn is the farthest planet in our solar system, Neptune. You'll need a larger telescope and an eyepiece that gives you at least 200 times magnification to make out its disk, but regardless, it can be a nice blurry blue object through a pair of binoculars or a small telescope. By around 10 o'clock, Jupiter will make its way to good heights above the horizon for observing and imaging. This is my favorite planet to look at every year, with the Galilean moons revealing themselves through a pair of binoculars and its cloud belt starting to come alive through a telescope at roughly 50 to 75 times magnification. Watch the Galilean moons dance around the planet from hour to hour and night to night. Watch as its great red spot slowly moves around its edge and begins to face our planet. My best views of Jupiter with a 12-inch telescope typically come between 150 and 250 times magnification, depending on how calm and steady the night sky is. Jupiter will be at its closest point to Earth this January, but your views of it will be excellent for the next several months. Finishing out the planets, Uranus is still parked pretty close to the Pleiades star cluster this month, and Mercury will be highest in the morning sky for some views around December 6th, but watch out for that rising sun when you're looking for it. We've been really spoiled the past few months with some incredible comets moving through our solar system. And even though December isn't going to quite reach those heights, but you can go out with a telescope in the early morning this December if you live in the Northern Hemisphere to see Comet 210P. It will start off the month around magnitude 10 and will only get dimmer as the month goes on, traveling through the constellation Virgo and Libra. A bit of an easier comet this month that will be visible from both the Northern and Southern Hemispheres is Comet 24P. It'll start to rise above the horizon after midnight with the best views being after 2 or 3 a.m. for the Northern Hemisphere, as it travels through the constellation Leo, and then between the constellations Coma Berenices and Virgo at around magnitude 8. Let's leave our solar system behind and take a look at our deep sky challenge for the month of December. To see this object, go outside about an hour and a half after sunset on a moonless night and face towards the southeast. 
There you'll find one of my favorite parts of the night sky, which includes the constellation Orion. Begin by looking for the three main stars that make up Orion's belt with the naked eye. Mintaka, Alnilam, and Alnatak. Let's switch over to a pair of binoculars now for Orion's belt and move our way down to one of the best objects in the night sky, the Orion Nebula. Under dark skies, it can even be viewed with the naked eye. Let's move up now to a telescope and view this object at around 50 times magnification. Regardless of your telescope, this nebula will reveal bright and faint clouds that make up its structure. Be sure to also take some time to study the fainter but still impressive features of NGC 1975 and the open cluster NGC 1981. Let's finish out the night by pushing up the magnification of our telescope to try and split the trapezium at the core of Orion. Depending on your telescope and the seeing conditions, you might be able to make out anywhere from four to six of the stars that make it up. For those of you getting into astrophotography, there's probably no better target in the night sky to cut your teeth on when it comes to long exposure photography and post-processing. Those are just some of the most incredible things that you can get out to see in the night sky for the month of December. If you've enjoyed this video, please like it and consider subscribing to this channel to join our growing community. But most importantly, let us know what you're hoping to get out to see in the night sky in the comment section below. I'd like to wish each and every one of you a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holiday Season. I truly appreciate your support of myself and this channel. And as always, clear skies from Late Night Astronomy.